Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn to work with GD script. Specifically, we're going to learn how to create a new Godot script and associate that script with a project scene. And we'll also cover a few basics about working with code in Godot. So as you can see here, I have a brand new project that I just launched and I happen to be on the 3D perspective. So I'm going to switch toggle over to the 2D perspective and then I'm going to zoom in on my viewport here so I can see everything. And then I'm going to come over to the scene tree and it's asking me because this is a brand new project to create a root node. So I'm going to click a 2D scene and Godot is going to add a node 2D as my root node. And then by convention, what I want to do is right click on that and click rename. And I'm going to go ahead and label that root. It's the root node of my scene. Now, if I look in the tab area right here, I can see that I actually haven't saved my scene. So I should probably go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is come over to scene. I'm going to click save scene and then the save scene as window pops up. And just like we've done before, we can see that the path where we, we're going to save this scene is the resources folder of my project. And then if we look down here in this window, we can see Godot's actually trying to be helpful by naming this scene root because the root node of the scene is actually called root. But as a convention, what we often do is we call the main scene, we actually give it the name main. And so I'm going to go ahead and change root to the word main. I'm going to keep the extension for text scene, and then I'm going to click save. Good. And if I look in my file system right here, I have my main scene, which happens to be the one that's open and that I'm editing, and it has a root node. And so this won't work yet if I click play because we haven't told Godot that we want that scene named main scene to be the one that starts our application. So you can see here it says, please confirm no main scene has been defined. You can change it or do you want to use the current one? And I'm just going to select the current scene. And when I do that, Godot will go ahead and load up and I can see my empty shell of a game here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Everything looks great. But in this lesson, what we want to do now is associate a script with our scene. So how do we do that? Well, the way we do it, it's really easy. We click on our root node and then we come to this little icon right here. And if you read the tooltip, it says attach a new or existing script to the selected node. In this case, the selected node is root. And so I'm going to go ahead and click that button. And you can see this little panel pops up that says attach node script. In other words, we're going to attach a script to the selected node. In this case, the root node. Now, there's a few things we can change here. We don't need to mess with any of these. But what I want to highlight right here is the idea of what this file is called. It's going to be saved in the resources folder and it's going to be called main.gd. In other words, let me go ahead and click create here. If we look down in the file system next to main scene, I have main.gd. That's because these two files go together. And when Godot loads up the main scene, which is our default scene that it's going to load automatically by default, it knows when it loads the root node that there is a script attached to it. And of course, the other major thing that you probably saw is that our workspace changed from 2D mode over to script mode. And this is the interface that we use to control our script. So if I go ahead and run our project now, actually I should save it first. So I'm going to come scene, save scene. And then I'm going to run my project. Boom. It shows up just like before. Of course, there's nothing we can see. But I know, because I've done this before, that this code is actually executing. So let's spend a little bit of time understanding this code. Now, there's a couple of things you're going to notice. First of all, there are 17 lines of code here. And if I was to press Enter, I could add in more lines of code easily. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is that some of the code, like on line one, is colorful. 
and some of the code, like lines four, five, and six, are grayed out. Now, why are those lines of code grayed out? Well, that's because they are commented out. In other words, this number sign, this number symbol right here, is how we turn code on and off. So by default, every script in Godot has to have three lines of code. So I'm actually going to delete all of these grayed out lines and just take a look right here at what we have now. So we have to have an extends thing. Don't worry too much about that right now if you're new to programming. Those of you who know programming, you understand that this class is extending the Node2D class. And then importantly, what we have here is something called funk ready. And that's short for function. And the name of this function is ready. So what's a function? Well, a function is just a bit of code that's grouped up and can be called at any time. In other words, it can be executed at any time. And so if you look at this comment here that Godot provides for us, it says that the ready function is called when the node enters the scene tree for the first time. In other words, this code that is in the ready function will run any time the root node enters the scene tree for the first time. So if I actually run this, nothing happens, even though this code is executing. And why is it not executing? And why does nothing happen? Well, because the word pass is here. And pass in GD script is simply a word to tell Godot, skip this function. There's nothing for you to do, Godot, in this function, so just pass it over. But what we can do is replace this with our own code that we write. So let's go ahead and do that. What we want to do is something that's very common in programming, which is to print something out to the output window, which is down here. So what I'm going to do is type in the keyword print, and notice how it turns red. That's a keyword in Godot. That's a built-in function. And I'm going to tell Godot to print something. And I can tell it to really print anything I want. And I will say, there be dragons, like that. And if I play this code, I'm going to go ahead and save, and then click play. I can see my sentence here, there be dragons. It printed out to the output window. Okay, that's great. That's telling us that our code is working. So what's happening here? When Godot loads up the main scene, the first thing it does is load up the first node in that scene. Godot says, oh, I need to check. Is there a script related to this node? Yes, there is. I'm going to load up that script. And the first thing I need to do is run the ready function. And what does the ready function ask Godot to do? It asks it to print a statement to the output window using the print function. And uh, we could get a little bit fancier with it. We could do something like we could put some underscores around this, maybe something like that. And actually, I'm going to copy that line of code and I'm going to just to make it a little easier to see. Now, if I do that, Let's run my program again, and there we go. There be dragons, and you can see it's got some nice borders above and below it. Okay, excellent. Now, if for some reason we didn't want one of these lines of code to run, we could comment it out by just putting the number sign in front of it and turning it off. So watch what happens when I run my code now. And if you look in the output window, it's executing lines 5 and 7, but skipping over line 6. Easy. One other thing that I want to show you. Now, oftentimes in programming, we need something called variables. And just like in algebra, variables are values that can change and hold a piece of information. And so we might do something like this. I'm going to work in line three here. I'm going to say var my name. And I'm going to say my name equals Dan. And so now I have a variable. The name of the variable is my name, and it's equal to a value, in this case, Dan. And so what I can do now is come down to my ready function, and you probably guessed what we're going to do here, is I can use that variable to print out a name. And so if we take a look at what happens, 
it says dotted line, there be dragons, dotted line, Dan. And it printed out that variable. And what I could do is get a little bit fancy and do something like, hello. And I'm just going to do something like this. Hello plus my name. And watch what happens when we print this out. It says, hello, comma, Dan. And so I use the plus symbol here to combine or concatenate this string, hello, with the string my name. Now, what is a string? A string is any text that shows up between quotation marks. And strings are different than numbers. So let's create another my value. And that's going to be equal to 1, 2, 3. Now, notice 1, 2, 3 is a different color. It's not yellow. And that's because Godot realizes that 1, 2, 3 is actually a number. And so it's not. it doesn't think it's a string. It's expecting us to do math with the variable called my value. And so what I could do is get a little bit fancier with my print statement and say something like, I'm going to put in a period space. You have... my value plus gold coins. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're getting an error. Why is Godot complaining? It says invalid operands string in int in operator plus. And so this is a classic programming problem. Game engines, like any programming language, are actually not very smart. And so what's happening here is Godot thinks my value, 1, 2, 3, is a number, which it is. It's treating it as an integer. That's why it says int down here. But what's happening is Godot is trying to do math with my value and this string, gold coins. And it's not smart enough to recognize that all I want to do is print out the sentence. So the question is, how do I fix this? Now, Godot is not smart enough to print out an integer or a number. And so what we have to do is tell Godot to treat this variable, my value, which is storing a number, we have to tell Godot, convert my value to a string. And how can we do that? We can type in str and we can wrap it in parentheses like that. And that just tells Godot, treat the value or the variable my value as a string for right now. And so if I stop my game and play it again, it's going to say, there be dragons. Hello, Dan, you have 123 gold coins. And so this is the basics of writing GD script. So let's just quickly review. What did we cover? We learned how to assign a script to the root node we learned that every script has to have a ready function. We also noted that we can comment out lines of code by just putting a number sign in front of them. And also I should show you that I can select a whole bunch of lines of code and click toggle comment. And it will turn all of those off by default. And if I select those again, right click and toggle comment or command K, it will turn them back on. We also learned that there are two important types of variables, a string variable, and there is a integer or number variable. And those are different kinds of information. And finally, we learned about the print function, which allows us to print information down to the output panel. And we can print strings that we type in between the parentheses of the print function. Or we can get a little bit fancy and concatenate or combine variables and strings and even numbers as long as we convert those numbers into strings. Okay, that's a little bit of an example of getting started with writing Godot script.